Welcome to a very special episode because a few days ago we crossed our 10,000 subscribers mark. Now in the grand scheme of things in YouTube that's not a massive milestone but to us it's a big deal. We've only been going for 15 months and I just wanted to say thank you to all of you that have watched, subscribed, commented, just generally be involved in the journey. It's been amazing having you along and we wouldn't be here without you. You'll be pleased to know if you're a regular watcher of the channel that we are back on the DeLorean today so let's get on with the episode. Hi and welcome back. Now I have a bit of a dilemma because we're starting to venture outside of any experience I've got on cars like this. Now this car, if you're new to the channel, is a 1981 DeLorean. I'm sure you're familiar with it. It is running a 1985 Renault Alpine GTA turbo engine. So I am building the car that never was. Unfortunately, I'm now having to design stuff into the car that it wasn't meant to have. For instance, we've got to put it in this intercooler. Now, the intercooler comes off the turbo and it cools the air before it goes back into the inlet manifold here. So our turbo charges down there. We've got to get the air through the intercooler and into the inlet manifold, easy enough. The problem is we've got to get cold air through the intercooler. And as you can see, that's the cab in there. It's the rear windscreen of the cab. We have this glass on the side and without putting it all the way to the front and running hoses all the way down the car and all the way back again, and they're quite big hoses, where are we going to put the intercooler or intercoolers if we were gonna have a couple? Well, basically what I've decided to do, and I would like to hear people's thoughts on this, what I've decided to do is I'm gonna take out the glass either side of the back of the car because it's not part of the cab. Yes, it will let water in when it rains, but actually as long as I seal it along here and there is somewhere for the water to drain, it's not gonna cause any problems in the cabin anyway. So, I can actually build my own ducting or air scoops to go on the side and replace this and then do the rest of the glass in perspex. So that is the plan. The thing is, will it work? Right, now the other day I started trying to take this glass out. I had a uh, standing, effectively a standing knife with a very, very long blade on it. I was trying to work my way up and round to get the, the basically the glue that was holding this in um, out of the car. Unfortunately, it didn't work very well. So I have bought this tool kit. Now you have this long, thin tool for basically pushing a wire, like a cheese wire, up through here. And then you have these handles which allow you to hold onto the wire to basically move it backwards and forwards and slice your way through the rubber as you're going round. Couple of little problems. I've never done this before. The glass is 44 years old, very expensive. I don't think the glass is gonna have any problems with being 44 years old, but if I break this, I don't have the original glass anymore and uh, it's probably not that cheap to get a replacement anyway, and I don't really want to replace it. Also, it's not exactly convenient getting your hands into here. So I think what we're gonna have to do is work our way around mainly the top bit and down the sides so that we can actually get the glass to start to come away and then use a blade along the bottom. I'm sure there's people out there that have either done this before or do it for a living who will be going, no, 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 that's definitely not the way to do it. But I'm gonna give it a go. Um, I'm gonna be as careful as I can. So wish me luck. Right, and after 46 minutes, we want that damaging the bodywork. I've still got to take this bit out of the back anyway because I'm not going to use it. It is an air duct, but it's not going to be much use on what I'm doing. But uh, glass is out, 44 years old, one piece. Right, so this is the problem. We started off with the intercooler that came with the engine when it was back in the Metro 6R4 rally car, where there was loads of space. It, the core's not in great shape, but what we've done is Stuart's modified it and we've put these aluminum plates on the end to extend it out so it sits above the side of the tub and that's our starting point. Now, basically what happened before was I decided that I would look at potentially twin intercoolers. 
and these are from a Mark 1 Audi TT. But basically, you can see the core, it's like four inches thick, and at the back of the car, the only space you've got is behind the rear wheels, where you're just gonna be constantly kicking stuff up into it, and even with a grill in front, it's not gonna survive very long. But I wasn't done yet, because I thought, well, maybe, there is an intercooler that's smaller on the market that we could slide in the side. Maybe we could have scoops on the side with the intercooler there and then have the pipe coming up from the turbo to one intercooler, linking across to the other and going to the inlet manifold. So I did some research and I found that one of the smallest intercoolers you could buy is an R52 Mini Cooper S. And this is about two inches thick. Yes, it does have some really weird oval shapes on either end that we'd have to uh, do some welding to, but actually this is really slimline and we could probably fit it in. The problem is, once I did fit it in here, it's still interrupted with the bodywork here. And that meant that that idea was written off as well. And knowing that that's one of the smallest ones on the market without going heavily customized, basically had to write that idea off. So we've gone back to that. Now I'm actually quite happy with where it sits because it sits under the back of the louvres. And if I bring you down here, you can see through there that you can see the intercooler at the back and actually it's, we've still got about an inch of space at the top, which is great. And we've got space to drop it down. So we can cut into these, we can take a chunk out and then we can move it down. And then that's gonna help us evolve the final design. But I don't think we're a million miles away right now. So we just need to make some other alterations to it. And what we've got here is a seven inch fan from a motorbike. It sits on a motorbike radiator that is drawing a lot of air through. So this is gonna be a suck fan. It's gonna be pulling the air through. So the air comes through the ducts, through the intercooler and out, straight out the louvres at the back. So three of these, and you can see we welded these aluminum plates at the top here, one at the top and one at the bottom, and that made it taller so we had space to bolt these on. So I'm gonna to have to bolt these on now, put the intercooler at place and start plumbing up the hoses. So that's what we've got to do. Let's get this in the car. I have no idea if I'm going like properly over the top, but considering it's not a Back to the Future replica car, um, I think it looks pretty cool. It also looks ridiculous. So now we're gonna see if it fits inside. So, okay, so the fan, uh, the middle fan is interrupting with the, there's like a, a, a spine down the middle of this that reinforces the louvre. Um, and it's just interrupting and we probably need to go down another 15, 20 mil, something like that. So now we need to sort out the hoses. Obviously hose going on there, hose going on here. And actually these ones aren't a million miles away from fitting, pretty much ready to go on. When I was first sorting out the engine like two years ago and trying to work out how I was going to fit this in, one of the things that I wanted to put back on the car is the air conditioning unit. Now I can't show you at the moment because it's in the corner, it's on the crate on the original engine. However, it bolts down on down here to the end of this rocker cover. So I need to basically chop this back so that it avoids it here. It's a load of heavy casting that I don't actually need. And then I can bring the pipe from about here straight up to there. And then it reduces the amount of elbows and extra pipe and things like that. So I'm gonna do that as well. I wanna take it back to about here. So we're gonna have to put that in the vise, take it off with a hacksaw. We've gotta disconnect all the pipes. And don't forget to take pictures to remind yourself where everything is. Right, now I've cut this off, you can probably see inside loads, trying to get it to focus on here, loads and loads of aluminium filings. And I do not want these going into the engine. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna give it a hoover out, I've got the hoover down here, I'm gonna give it a hoover out, clear all this out, then I'm gonna go through it with a cloth, then I'm gonna get some cleaning fluid, go through it again until I'm absolutely sure there is nothing in here because I do not want this getting into the cylinders. 
Okay, so the inlet manifold can go back on now. We cut this right down. This is the dump valve. I'm gonna chop these down as well just to get them sitting closer, just to make it a little bit tidier in here, but I'll probably do that in a bit. But we need to get these back on. I think these are drastically oversized for what we need. So I'm gonna see if I can find some alternative bolts. So the seal looks in pretty good condition around there, so we're not gonna to touch that. So we're just gonna take this and put this back on in the same orientation. So that's on, and then we can put a vacuum to our turbo back on, so that goes on there. And now we can go back to our hoses and work out what we're gonna put on from there to there, but it should be relatively easy. I think all we're gonna need is 135 and then another 135 but we do need one. I've actually got one on this end of the tube. So I think what we'll do is we'll take this off and use the ones that we know we're gonna use first. So that is 135, but it's also wider at one end. We'll go on nicely on there. I also wanna replace this tube because this is stainless steel and it weighs an absolute ton. I mean, it's never gonna rot, but I think it's a bit heavy duty for what we need. I mean, that's the wrong pipe to connect them up, but it looks like it's gonna do the trick. So, that's one-sided. Now, obviously I want to get the hoses all the same color, but at the moment I'm working with what I've got in my scrap box, but that is basically, I mean, just rest it there. That is basically the turbo setup, straight off the turbo down here into the inlet uh, side of the intercooler. Air foot passes through, we've got the big fans pulling through, and then we just need to get the tubes that are gonna come inside from the scoops and through the intercooler. And I think that looks really, really cool. So, on to tidying up the engine bay. Right, I think we're gonna leave it there because the intercooler is in. Yes, okay, there's a couple of pipes that I need to replace and I need to uh, get a couple of parts ordered. The intercooler is not bolted in place because it is just a prototype and I've got a lot of tidying to do on all the wiring. And I've gotta move a few little bits about. This glass still needs to come out. This vent still needs to come out. So I think I'm just gonna get onto that off camera. You've seen me do this before, but I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, bye.